Hi, Marcel, the Wood Butcher, back again with another exciting episode of, uh, well, uh, like I said, like I always say, and you're probably getting tired of hearing it, the production crew is, uh, well, they're not here because I don't have one. Okay, uh, this is episode one, two, three, episode Oh, oh, I should use that finger. Episode three, three, right, of the uh, business card holder that I'm making for a Navy Corpsman veteran that worked for the Marine Corps by request. And uh, in episode three, okay, episode one, we showed the wood, episode two, and, and I don't bore you with cutting it and all of that crap because, I mean, you should know how to use a saw. If you don't, you know, the measurements are there. I told you it was eight and a half inches by this, by that, by that. You know, just cut the fucking thing and, and, and do it. And then sand it down and boom, boom, boom. And we're in the finish stage of it now. And what I mean by finish stage, I don't mean by completing the project. What I mean is by actually, you know, the wood has been stained. It's got uh, probably, well... Only about six coats of shellac on it. I like to go for, well, sometimes I use shellac, sometimes I, I use lacquer. Depends on the wood. It really depends on the wood. Uh, and, and I almost always use glossy. A unless it's special request that somebody wants satin. The reason I use glossy, because it shines like a... a Let's just say it shines nicely, and it's also impervious to if you want to, you know, clean this thing with pledge or but don't use Clorox on it, you know. But like pledge or or uh, you know whatever, whatever you know furniture polish you can use on it, or just basically most of the time because the lacquer or the shellac is so thick on it. It's it's like polishing your car, you know. You just use you know a, a, a mild mild wax on it, furniture wax, or to be truthfully honest with you, I'm gonna zoom in for a second here. One of the best things you can use on something that is shellacked or lacquered real good, paste car wax, paste. Car wax and rub it off with a you know you know them 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 what the hell do they call them the the, the special cloths they have that are about the size of a washcloth microfil microfilament micro cloth whatever micro micro something you know that they're they're washcloths that aren't washcloths and they don't abrase you know and this and that. But let me show you where we are at stage three of this. But before I show you stage three, I want to show you what my uh, finishing, you know, once I stain a product, what I do to let them dry. And I, I do it this way because it eliminates, you know, well, if you know how to use, well, most of the time, I'll be honest with you, I use the rattle cans you know, uh, spray for, well, not for stain, but for, uh, for my shellac and for my lacquer and for, if it's something that's going to be outside like bird feeders. Oh, by the way, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Bird feeders. Okay. Here we go. There's bird feeders. They are probably one of my most popular sellers. And I do them for everything from this particular one here is done. Actually, about three or four of them are done here. And what they call the Japanese method of preserving wood is called shoshugiban, which means I take a torch to the wood. This one here. You got me at a disadvantage here because I got to hold these fucking things up. Well, but anyway, 
it's burnt to a char. Maybe you can, I hope you can see that. But when you rub your hand across it, there's no charcoal on your fingers. That's because it's sealed with shellac or lacquer. But that wood, the Japanese method of uh, Shoshugi ban, or ban, it's S-H-O-U-S-U-G-I-B-A-N, Shoshugi ban, right? Actually preserves wood better than Thompson water seal, Olympic water seal, or anything else ever will. This is the method that has made Japanese and Chinese structures stand up for hundreds and thousands of years without the wood being degraded. Because what the burning process does, when it's done right, and you know how to do it, it actually cauterizes or seals the pores in the wood so that no water can penetrate. I can pour water on this before I put the finish on it so that you don't get the charcoal uh, on this particular type where you can actually... I hope you can see the actual char marks on there where it's kind of, I think you can see, yeah, you can see them in there, right? Well, these are suet feeders. They're four inch suet feeders. I always do them two sided and I always leave that extra lip down here on them because, you know, woodpeckers love to eat from suet feeders and woodpeckers, uh, they, they, to eat, and to hold on to something, they need to rest their tail. So that's why they do. Okay. Uh, this one is not shoshugi. It's it's stained and uh, yeah, yeah yeah. There's price tags on there and that you know. But you know what I did is I I from Vista Print I ordered my wood butcher price our business cards, and I used the opposite side. For the the opposite, well, you can't the opposite side for the price tag. Yeah, I get fifteen bucks a piece for these, and they're what are they made out of? What kind of wood? I'll give you three guesses. The first and second don't count, right? Y you're right, pallet wood. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me. I, I'm trying to lay these things down without. Uh, this one is stained. Thing. Oh, and by the way, you know, a lot of people will tell you or try to tell you that when you stain something, you can't use it for birds and stuff like that. That is bullshit. It is bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Once the stain is dried and in the wood, and if it's treated properly, it is not a hazard to the birds. This guy here. This is also shashugi, shashugi bond. It's burnt, right? And with a coating put on it. Uh, this guy is shashugi bond. It's burnt and put on. He's stained, right? But, you know, what you gotta do, I have to pardon me a second. I gotta put these other two back on here and hang this up. Uh, to be honest with you, I know I started this off as 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 uh, uh, part three of a business card hold holder, but I'm really really bogged down because I'm getting ready and and working my goliuns off for a, uh, a show that I'm going to be displaying a lot of my products on. Well, it's not really a show, what it, what it actually is. It's a neighborhood yard sale that involves like 43 houses. And for the past two years that I've been doing woodworking, uh, it's been very profitable for, profitable for me to uh, hawk my wares or sell my wares. Hang on one second while I hang this beast back up. Okay? Yeah, these I sell for 
15 bucks a piece. $15 a piece. I won't pay you, but that sounds pretty cheap, doesn't it? But, you know, my profit margin on them is, uh, let's just say it's, it's, uh, manageably reasonable. That's a nice way to put it, okay? <laughs> it is. I mean, come on. Where do I get my wood from? Come on, come on. What's the answer? What's the answer? Where's 98% of my wood come from? Did I hear somebody whisper pallets? Yes. Yes. Why do I use pallets? <laughs> because I'm on a low budget. And it's economical for me. But basically... I kind of make the stuff and sell it a little less expensive than other people. Two reasons. My resources are low. And I enjoy doing it. But let's get back to the uh, Navy Corpsmen's who work with the Marine Corps uh, business card holders. Excuse me one second while I Indulge in one of my vices. Okay, let me grab both pieces. Okay. From the piece of pallet wood we showed in episode one. This is where it's at right now. That's the front. You'll notice the... How can I turn this the right way? You know... The bevel on it, the natural bevel of the wood. I, I cut the end square, sanded them down. I didn't use a router. I sanded it so that it shows that it's handmade. The All the edges here, they're pretty damn close to each other, but they're not exact. The corners are great, but they're not exact. To me, that shows handmade. That's only got about six coats of uh, shellac on it. In my opinion, it needs probably about two or three more. But that's the base, okay? The pedestal that the uh, United States Navy Medical Corps, you know, that you know, the doctor thing with the USN on it or whatever, you know, whatever they have. I, I'm, I'm really not familiar is going to go on here, and then on the right side, drilled at somewhere between an 18 and 20 degree angle. I'm not exactly sure yet, but it's going to be between 18 and 20 degrees. Done on the drill press. is going to be drilled in probably about a half inch in, and then on the other side, same thing, 18, 20 degrees, you know, drilled in about a half inch, and then a, uh, oh shit, that went my cell phone, but that's okay. It's in an otter case. That means the flag, the American flag will hang this way and the Navy flag will hang this way, right? I already have the Navy flag. I already have a, a bunch of flags from different, different branches of service. This piece here, and the reason the screws and the, the wire are hanging from these are because that's the way I dry. And I'll show you that in a second. This is going to mount on here, but centered. Say, uh, probably about here, right? And boom, then uh, the business card, the brass business card holders will go about here and here. Okay. Let me hang these back up. And you're going to be surprised at why I choose to hang stuff upside down like this. And the reason I choose to use wire instead of rope. Because I want it to sit flat when it's drying with a surface this, this large on it. So that 
you don't get runs and drips. I mean, if you know how to spray paint, you're not going to get them anyway. But the chance is there. Well, if you hang them this way, you don't get them. And if you do, they're all coagulated towards the center and drip off overnight. And it's minimal, minimal secondary sanding to put the second coat on. Give me one second to hang these back up and I'll and I'll show you uh, the extent of the projects I'm working on and, and what is actually hanging here to dry and how I do it. Being on a a low budget workshop. But a, I'm not going to say a phenomenal volume yet, you know, but I, I do okay. I'm going to apologize, first of all, because the other uh, 48 inch, well, for shop lights, I use the 48 inch twin bulb LED lights. I do not use fluorescent. The LED lights, they cost a little more. But let me tell you something. They give off a true white light. They cost pennies, pennies to burn. You know, and when I say burn, I don't mean throw them in the fire pit. I mean, you know, to illuminate on the electric bill. You, you can't beat LEDs. They cost a little more. They're going to run you about $40, $45, up to $50 for a 48-inch fixture that kind of... Well, yeah, okay. I mean, if I tilted it a little bit, yeah, I get a little bit better lighting, but not as well. But, you know, maybe I should do that when I shoot, is I should figure a way out to hold this mofo up. Because it does look better. Okay, right. Okay, but here's what I do. Uh, bear with me a minute while I move the camera again. Oop. And I'm going to show you exactly what I have drying and why. Okay. First of all, oh, that saw blade's not done yet. He's not done anything with yet. But there's the flat piece I just showed you for the Navy Medic. There's the piece that's the pedestal for it. Then we go to candle holders. Notice the way I hang them in tiers so that they don't bump into each other. Because what I do, you know, if it's this time of year, the moisture is out there. If it rains a little bit and stuff like that. So I keep the fan on to keep them go. That's, that's one, two, three, four candle holders. Then there's one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three. Three, four more candle holders. And then and there's one up there too that the light's blocking it. And then there's a saw blade that has the numbers on it. Well, that's going to be a clock. And what I hang it from, I have a piece of chain. A simple piece of chain that I had. That I had and I just... It's hung up at this end and that end in the shop. Shop's a mess, isn't it? You know, but I get to where I got to get to, right? You know, hey, there. Oh, that's the tile saw that I've been using. There's my table saw that I got other stuff stored on right now, uh, you know. And there's my... Uh, bandsaw that I have other stuff stored on right now. Hey, I, I, I'm, I, I'm shop tight. And this is what I shoot everything from. Can you see? Okay. Okay. But, hey, when you have a small space, I mean, my garage, it, it's not a a two-car garage. It's it's not this. It's 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 a one-car garage with a four-foot extension on it. I have less than 480 square feet to work with. 
and I got a lot of tools that I got to work around. So I, 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 I move around a lot. But that's part three of the, uh, the new business card holder. Now, next stage, it's going to be boring to video because it's like three more coats of shellac on there. So it shines really, really well. It resists scratches. If it does scratch, just take a, you know, like, like a paper towel and some pledge or something and it'll fill it in. It's like if you get a surface scratch on your car. They didn't scratch the paint. They didn't scratch the fender. All they scratched was the lacquer. That's what those little filler pens work for or, or rubbing compound or even paste wax will do it half the time. As an added bonus, I want to throw something else in that's a little shop tip. No, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to make that a separate short video. But anyway, that's where we are. Uh, what I need to do now is I need to find, I already have the Navy flag. I already have the U.S. flag. I already have the wood. I have it cut. I have it stained. I have it finished. What I need to find now is a United States Navy Corman's uh, emblem to impregnate into that wood. I'd rather not use a sticker. I'd rather get the actual emblem that has the two pins on the back that we throw with the you know, the little clips on the back to hold it to your uniform and drive it into the wood. That's what I'd rather find. Okay, so that's episode three. Episode four is going to be when we assemble this now. Uh, I should have the parts in probably tomorrow or the next day, you know, the brass business card holders, you know, to, to mount them. And I'll show you how to measure them because let me tell you something. The first two of these I made, it was a pain in the ass to match up the holes for the business card holders to make sure you keep about an eighth of an inch on each end so that the cards slide in and out easily. Well, I'll show you how I came overcame that problem in episode four. Okay, so for right now, this is Marcel, the wood butcher, saying, Protect your eyes, protect your lungs, protect your ears. Never, ever forget about these guys while you're working with a saw or a router. And the easiest way to do that, use the gripper. Okay, for right now, goodbye, good night, and Semper Fi. I have one more shoot, short video to shoot after this to post tonight as well. Yeah, it's a three video night. Hey, I go in spurts. I, I my schedule, I, I can't say I'm going to do it every Wednesday. I'm going to do it every Saturday. I may have a week or two in between, but here they are. They're there for you to see. If you like them, tell me you do. If you don't like them, tell me you don't. If you do like them, Hit the subscribe button that's down below. Oh, it's on this side. That's right. The camera's backwards. It's on this side. It's that red thing that says subscribe. I think you'll see as of today, which is uh, October 4th, 2016, you'll see I only have like 49 subscriptions, but 90, I think it's 98 or 99 videos up there. And uh, bang. I need your subscribers, and I need your views. So help me out here, okay? Take care, and make it a great day.